Hello, my name is Pastor Lloyd Hemstreet. And I'm Reverend Tyler Wagonacre. And we are uh, one of the many, or some of the many, with the Abide Project. Tonight we're coming to you from Coopersville CRC, a uh, little bit after Synod just wrote, wrote, wrapped up their activities for the night. But uh, we're not down at Calvin, Tyler. We are not at Calvin because they actually wrapped them up online. It was a Zoom, the, the Zoom part of it, the first part of it that the COD had worked with the executive director on. Uh, they won't be meeting in person, what, about another week and a half or a week or so on June, June 9, June 10, June on 10. Friday, June 10. So, yeah, we got over two weeks before they're yes. meeting in person. So, okay. Yep. But they, they dealt with, especially tonight, uh, besides the opening, uh, kind of an opening sort of worship and opportunity to, to hear a message. Uh, the big thing was the uh, selection, election of office bearers, or excuse me, of officers um, for the different, uh, four different officers in, in, in the Senate coming up, so. Yep, yep, that was what the focus of and uh, was the majority of the evening, although they spent a good amount of time together in prayer too tonight, so. They did, They yes. did do that, yes. so. Uh, got started with uh, the Speaker or, or President Pro Tem, yep. is it? President Pro Tem, I'm uh, Dirk Van Eck, uh, pastor of Encounter Church in the Grand Rapids area. And uh, he gave a message um, really just talking about, I know, getting along, the importance of that. He talked about his, his kids and the importance of them in the backseat when they're traveling south, about them getting along. And so he kind of just extrapolated that and said, it's a denomination. We're kind of like almost uh, all in a car together and we're squabbling right now. And he said, sometimes we don't get along and sometimes we do. But then he brought it to Jesus's high priestly prayer, which a lot of times I've been to sin a number of different times. It's a fairly typical way that a lot of these kind of start out um, talking about the importance of unity. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so I know he went to, uh, to John chapter 17, especially he highlighted verse 21. Right, right. But, but the problem with uh, highlighting 21, and I mean, we've heard this call several times, but as Reformed <clears throat> Christians, we know the importance of context. And if you go back just a couple of verses to verse 17 of John chapter 17, it talks about sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Before we can come together in unity as one, we know we have to be founded on that one truth. We have to be solidly planted on God's word. And so that is the challenge. And I mean, that is what is on the agenda for Synod this that, year. That's so. big time on the agenda. So um, I know he mentioned, you know, Jesus at the time was praying for Synod 2022, really wanting us to be one. But again, you have to read it in the context. As Reformed Christians, we really understand that. And um, otherwise, in many ways, if you just take 21 out of context, uh, we could say, well, why aren't we one with the Roman Catholics, for instance? Uh, um, if this is exactly what Jesus meant by that, without any context of the, of the truth, uh, we are woefully lacking in many ways of kind of living that out just on a day-to-day -day level. And so, right. but, we, but we have some serious disagreements with Roman Catholics, for instance, right. um, on I understanding mean, I, of I sacraments. Love, I love their fried food and fish on a Friday night, so <laughs> I, I could go along with that, but, but no, there are... But it's very issues. difficult to do, <laughs> to do um, a church with them in terms yes. of the mission, the work yes. of the church. And yep. in many ways, it's some of these same kind of issues. Um, right. Even though we have Christian reform under the name, we have a, a greater understanding and clarity that uh, we we very likely are not on the same mission. In fact, I don't think we are on the same mission. And uh, this synod will really help to chart us forward. Right. Um, which which Christian Reformed Church will we be? And that's why the officers, the selection of officers, the, the election of them, mm -hmm. can be very important because it helps to set the pace about where the delegates initially, what are they thinking? What kind of direction do you, um, would they like Synod to go in? And I was really encouraged mm -hmm. uh, by that. I don't, yeah. I don't know about you. I, yeah. I, I'm guessing you were. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. We, they, they were yes. we were thankful for them. I mean, uh, we ran into some technical difficulties. You get 150, 170, uh, 190, whatever the amount of delegates uh, yeah, uh, yeah. trying to get them online. And not everybody does that real regularly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, technology, I was wrestling with my laptop this morning. And so I understand uh, those kind of challenges. So they had some challenges getting going and we had a vote and uh, yeah. president elected, and then we had to go back and make sure we did it right and do it again. But uh, an error was made, they, and they admitted that early yeah. on. That's yeah. why they had to go back and re-vote on the president, because they left off one of the top three vote-getters. Mm -hmm. um, 
who they selected from eventually to vote to be the president. And so they eventually went back um, and said, okay, well, these are actually the top three that were supposed to be there. Um, was, uh, and I wrote, I wrote these down to Jose Reyes, who's the only officer or former officer of Senate. He's the yeah. only one who's been an officer right. before. To some extent, it makes sense that he'd be president. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's the one that certainly Well, you just kind of gave it away, actually, Lloyd, that he got elected president. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I did. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, Paul Vander Clay and Derek Ukema yeah. were, were the, rounded out the top three. Right. But, but um, uh, in knowing, I, I know Derek, I know Jose, mm -hmm. and I know, I know of Paul, but I know mm -hmm. those two personally. And I know both of those are, are very solid orthodox, right. um, uh, traditional on uh, the issue of human sexuality and marriage. And those were the two, by far, the two top vote getters. Yeah. Um, uh, and they decided between the two of them and Jose Reyes came out on top with that. Right. Um, then they went to the vice president. And, uh, and again, that went to the top two. It was Paul Vander Clay and Derek Bukema. Right. And, uh, and Derek ended up as the vice president yep. again. So. Yep. And I don't know Jose personally. I know he's been very involved and outspoken um, on, on for orthodoxy. And, yes, and, yes, yeah. on the uh, Consejo Latino, yeah. and uh, yeah. is one of the leaders of that. The Hispanic right. churches in the denomination have come out very strongly and powerfully um, for the Human Sexuality Report and all of its recommendations. Yep. Um, and in fact, even saying that, it reminds me that the Korean Council just. I think just this week came out with a okay. statement as, um, representing the Korean churches, which are a sizable number of churches in the denomination, also saying essentially the same thing, that they wholeheartedly come behind the Human Sexuality Report and, in fact, unequivocally, they use that oh, wow. word, unequivocally um, uh, support all of the recommendations. Okay. And so now we have um, from the Hispanic church community, mm -hmm. we have from the Korean church community, and also from Classless Red Mesa. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so from some of the native voices, at least in the United States, have spoken out very strongly mm -hmm. on this as well. Very, very same, very similar right. um, on that. So, right. yep. uh, so yeah. But I, I know Jose, going back, uh, we actually went to seminary to, mm -hmm. together for a couple of years and worked with him and interacted with him at synods. But, uh, but I think you know yeah. Derek. Right. I know, I know Derek. I don't know. Uh, I've never met, have, haven't had the privilege of meeting Jose yet, but I've met Derek. Uh, Derek actually was interning at my home church on his first summer internship uh, in 2010. Uh, the, that summer, my father had a massive stroke. Mm -hmm. Uh, ended up in the hospital right away, and uh, it was Derek who was in the office when I had to go and talk about uh, removing life support from my mm. father. And so, uh, yeah, I, I was thankful to see Derek's name up there and know he's served well and know the integrity that, that he has as well as his uh, pastoral heart that he's had right from seminary. So yeah. very, very thankful to see him. Derek, I mean, very solid, uh, a pastoral heart. I know one of the big things he's really labored on Chicagoland, where he pastors, is uh, um, is uh, trying to bridge some of the, the divide between different uh, racial congregations, mm -hmm. and especially in the black community. He's mm -hmm. really worked and uh, swapped pulpits, and so has really led in terms of by example yeah. of how this can look like as brothers and sisters in Christ, um, being able to do some common mission together, even when we disagree on some other things. Uh, but on the cores, and we have the core correct, mm -hmm. when we have a high view of scripture, when we love Jesus Christ and want others to come to a saving knowledge in him, there's a lot of things you can do. Yep, yeah. yep there is. But then we also had the first and second clerk. Right. Yes. We moved on to the clerk. And, uh, that was also very exciting. <laughs> that, that was, was interesting yeah. to watch. Uh, that got narrowed down to two on the first clerk. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a little face-off between a couple of classes. Yes, uh, yes. Classes uh, Zealand. Which we're very partial towards we are because we are both from classes <laughs> Zealand are, here. We yes. are classes Zealand pastors. And so we know very well our brother uh, Aaron Friesman, Reverend Aaron Friesman who was one of the two uh, names, as well as was from R Rebecca Jordan Hayes from right. Classic Grand Rapids East. Grand Rapids East. And, and so, so, yeah, so it's kind of, uh, <laughs> boy, if you want two different kind of visions of where the denomination want to go, yep. Classes Zealand versus uh, Classes Grand Rapids East in terms of vision, very different visions. Mm -hmm. And and there was, between these two officers, the Synod had a very clear choice. Right. And which direction did they choose? Well, they went with Aaron, they went with Zealand. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. I understand. Okay, yeah, so, that's right. So, but we know where, and he's, <laughs> right. he's, a, uh, and he's written quite a bit in the banners, very true. insightful pieces, yeah. as well as other yeah. places. He's uh, he's taught, he's 
I don't know if he's an adjunct, but he's taught classes at Calvin University. Right. Religion classes and there. So, so, um, yeah. so he's, again, very thoughtful, mm -hmm. pastoral heart. So we'll yep. do an amazing job. Yep. Um, He'll serve well. He will. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then the second, uh, second clerk, someone I don't know. Um, yeah. But again, it was uh, Rebecca um, Jordan oh, Hayes from right. Classic Crampets East and uh, Luann Sankey. Um, uh, Sankey? Okay, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it was kind of a runoff, I guess, between them. Mm -hmm. I know Synod a lot of times likes to have, uh, you know, different kind of representations mm -hmm. of the denomination up front and the officers. Mm -hmm. And so it was between uh, two women mm -hmm. and, uh, and Luann got it. So yeah. not Rebecca. And I know Rebecca from Classic Crampets East uh, contact. So... Mm -hmm. Um, so as I look at the, the top officers, I'm really encouraged right. of the direction of synod right. already. It looks it looks promising. It looks very promising. Yeah, we'll and, see. and and hopefully it's an encouragement to the to the Orthodox delegates there to right. say this is an opportunity to really set a good course for the denomination yeah. and to not be timid on that, but instead to with a boldness and with a confidence say. This, even in the selection of our officers, we are very strongly in one direction. Mm. Um, uh, we can, in that, in that confidence of that, we can go forward and we can really, in a healthy way, move the denomination right. in a solid orthodox um, uh, way. Yeah. And so, At least with the majority of the, the officers, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And so this is, I'm really excited by where this can go. And I hope the delegates of, of Synod mm -hmm. uh, really are empowered by that and really go forward with yeah. kind of that the energy and conviction of God's word good. and uh, and knowing that they aren't alone. Yep, so that's what we need. Yeah, so it is. Other than that, the only other vote I think or the only other vote I caught between uh, my two-month-old was needed in our bottle, but another <laughs> vote I saw was the accepting the program committee's report and uh, that closed the work of Synod Officers 2019. So we should give a big thanks to those four officers that served three years longer than any other group of, of program committee has ever had to serve before. But in these unusual times, that's that's how uh, it, their work wrapped up and came to a close. Hopefully, but, hopefully, so. even though we have two, we have, you know, I, I trust more solid officers this time. Oh, hopefully yeah. we don't need them for, for a couple of years. years. Yes. Uh, to, to Lord willing, never again. Lord willing. Lord, Lord yeah. Lord, yeah. Lord, so again, we'll so. just keep asking yeah. God's blessings on the denomination. Be right. much in prayer. Absolutely. Um, for it. Be because prayer. what, yeah, two weeks, they'll be meeting in yep. person. A little over two weeks and and together be, in person at, at Calvin. Having committee work at yep. first for the first couple of days. Yeah. And then after that meeting, Monday, they start meeting and, and and uh, okay. kind of plenary session, that, or um, something uh, like that. So, so yes. yeah, and uh, keep following the Abide Project. Certainly, yes. we continue to put out information, and we're going to continue to bring out news information. It won't always be Tyler and me that you're stuck with. We'll, right. we'll get other prettier faces in front of you too. <laughs> that's right. Uh, other right. other thoughts and say things uh, right. because there, because yes. that's the nice thing about the Abide Project is so many different individuals right um, uh, spread throughout the United States and Canada mm -hmm. um, who are really concerned about the direction of the Christian Reformed Church yep. and have put a lot of time and energy and thoughtfulness into it. Yep. So yep. we are just two of many. Yes. And so yes. that we've been blessed to be able to, to have conversations with. Yeah. So keep, stay tuned and yes. uh, you'll be hearing more and then keep praying that the Lord works and leads this denomination through Synod 2022.